Hello, Tonal family. How are we doing tonight? Happy Wednesday. I am Kate, your community manager. We have a really fun episode for you tonight. It is with the celebrity superhero, super mom, Michelle T, who you will recognize from the very top of the leaderboard pretty much at all times. But before we get into that, I have a lot of announcements for you. I can't believe how many announcements for you I have. It's, um, it's the holidays, but we're not slowing down here. So if you're here, if you're watching, please say hello in the comments. Please say hi. Okay, so to start, announcements, new content this week. We have a new glute program with Coach Allison called Glute Gains. I just started it. I'm on day three. I'm loving it. The workouts are about 30 minutes, so it's perfect. You can get in, get out, or you can pair it with something else, maybe some dance cardio, maybe some mobility. Uh, it's for beginners, but I mean, I'm doing it and I'm getting my sweat in every day. Um, and it is four times a week. So check that out, Glute Gains. It's Coach Allison's first program and it is fantastic. We also have Coach Gabby just launched a body burner program that, or sorry, not a program, it's a workout, a tonal high intensity workout that is 24 minutes, nonstop work. You're going to get your heart rate up. You're going to get sweaty. Uh, and that is intermediate, Coach Gabby. And then after you do all that, you can foam roll it out with Coach Liz. She has a new foam rolling workout that's going to leave you feeling like butter. It is called Full Body Foam Roll. It is 33 minutes long, and it is a beginner workout for everyone. So try those out. Let me know what you think in the comments if you've tried them already. Hi, Holly. Hi, Morgan. Hi, Mariana. Hi, Dale. Hi, Arlene. Okay. Next, we have our Tonal Gives Back Challenge starting Friday. So raise your hand if you are done with 2020, if you are ready to say goodbye. Raise your hand if you want a little bit of accountability throughout the holidays for your workouts. If you need a little bit of an extra push, a little handhold to get those workouts in as things get a little bit crazy. And um, raise your hand if you like working out for a good cause for kids. So if you answered yes to any of those, you're going to love this challenge. It is 21 days till 2021. We are benefiting Eat, Learn, Play, which is Steph and Aisha Curry's foundation that helps kids struggling with hunger. Um, it gives them access to education and it gets them physically active, which we love at Tonal, obviously. So we have, you're going to have a workout every day starting on Friday. Um, I've designed them so that they're, they're quicker workouts that you can add in on top of any program you're already doing. Um, and then just post that in the daily workout thread with the Tonal Gives Back hashtag, and we'll donate a dollar on your behalf. We'll, we also have virtual group workouts every Saturday, 9 a.m. Pacific time, led by yours truly. And we're going to donate $5 on your behalf for every participant who joins that. So the first one is this Saturday, 9 a.m., Coach Gabby's Body Burner. Be sure to RSVP and show up. What else we got? Ooh, um, that uh, one more thing, the Bench Press Data Blog. It was called Four Data-Backed Ways to Improve Bench Press Strength. Um, I posted it in the community last week. If you read that, it's awesome. Uh, a lot of you asked for more data-driven content like that. It's really cool um, data-driven results of how you can improve your bench press strength. And our engineers kind of mined through all of the data that we've collected and found some really cool findings. If you haven't read that already, go to Tonal's blog and find it. I'm going to be doing an Instagram Live on Friday at 12 noon Pacific time answering the questions that you all submitted. Um, that's going to be on Tonal's Instagram. So go to Tonal's Instagram Friday at noon Pacific time, and I'll be on my Kate from Tonal Instagram, and Brant will be on Tonal's Instagram, and we're going to answer all of your questions. So if you have any questions about it, it's not too late to submit them. Leave them in the comments below. Send me a DM. Okay, we're still not done with updates. December events. Okay, if you're watching right now, go to the another browser, open the Facebook group, and look at the events tab. There are so many, and I still have more to add. We have so much going on this month. It's so fun, so exciting, so many ways to interact with your coaches and each other. We have Ask Coach Liz tomorrow. Submit your questions to her about your tonal training. We have tonal treats on Friday with Coach Nicolette and Coach Natalie. They're making this delicious, fudgy, chocolatey, no-bake, vegan amazingness. Um, and that's going to be the last tonal treats for a couple of months. So be sure to tune in, go get your ingredients. 
We have Coach Pablo's reverse training birthday workout on Tuesday. So he is, it's his birthday and you get to train him for his birthday. So you get to tell him to do a million burpees or a million split squats or whatever you want to make him do. So you can kind of get back at him for everything he made you do in Radical Muscle Rock. <laughs> we also have the Black Excellence Series Tuesday night and we have a ton more coming. So check out that events tab. If you want to get invites to all the events I make, just send me a friend request. Um, I'll add you and then you'll automatically get invited to whatever events I create. Moving on, gear shop updates. We've got a new winter apparel drop coming so soon, very, very soon. And we also sold out of the accessory shelf, but they are back in stock tonight or tomorrow. So if you are looking for an accessory shelf, they are back in stock very, very soon. And if you want to win one, join Total Gives Back Challenge and uh, the grand prize winner will get an accessory shelf. And then finally, we have some mobile updates. Whew, almost there. You now have the option to opt into product release push notifications. So I know you guys are always dying to know what's new on your trainer, what's going on in the land of Tonal. You can get a notification on your phone now for major releases. If you go to the Tonal Updates topic tag in this group, you can find directions on how to turn that on. And there's also more shareables for strength score and a couple of other things. So check out that topic tag and you can find what's new in the land of Tonal. Okay. That was a lot. <laughs> I don't think I've ever given that many um, updates. Um, hello, everyone. Hi, Richie. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> yes, Lisa, I giggle a lot. Okay, so let's get to the let's get to the good stuff. So you might recognize my guest this evening from the very top of the leaderboard. Pretty much always, she holds the record for holding the number one position for the longest at on the tonal leaderboard. And she holds the record for the most volume lifted by a female on tonal. And I'm pretty sure she's very high up there in overall volume. She was born in Jamaica, raised in Brooklyn, New York, and now resides in New Jersey. Her strength takes many forms as she is a first generation college student with a Bachelor of Science in Business and Technology Management and an Associate of Science in Graphic Design. And she is currently in the process of attaining her NASM Certified Personal Trainer and Nutrition Coach certification. Um, with a focus in weight loss management. Aside from that, she is a proud mom of three and a DIYer at heart who loves home construction and design and sharing her workouts on Instagram. Please help me welcome the lovely Michelle T. Hi. There she is, everyone. She's a real person. I am very much real. <laughs> So happy to have you on Tonal Talk. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm pretty sure you are the most requested guest I've ever had. I've had, yep, I have had so many people DM me from not only uh, members, but employees, Tonal employees. Some were, some were even messaged and was like, hey, you should really talk to Michelle on Tonal Talk. She's amazing. Community member member. And I was like, some of you are already in the works. So. <laughs> Thank you for helping me give the people what they want. <laughs> um, before we get into kind of how you train on Tonal, I want people to get to know you a little bit more and your strength training journey. So, I mean, it might be easy to think that you are just genetically gifted and have always had this very sculpted and defined <laughs> physique. But I know and you know that that's actually not the case. And I would love for you to kind of walk us through your journey and tell people um, how you got to where you are today. Oh. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Um, I did not start like this. Um, I actually was always very small to begin with. Um, gaining weight, gaining muscle weight is actually really hard for me. I have to do more because my body just does not want to hold on to weight. <laughs> so um, my journey, my fitness journey, actually really didn't start until after I had my kids. Um, like I said, I was naturally small growing up. Um, I played high, I played, I ran track in high school, more so just to get away from my mom and, you know, <laughs> out. So <laughs> away from her. Yeah. And in college, I played volleyball for about a year. Um, had to stop because, you know, school and I had to pay for school, so I had to work. Um, then I had my first child at 27 and the baby weight just, 
it did its thing and it went away. I didn't have to do much. Huh. Don't tell, don't tell mom. I don't believe it. it caught up to me though. It caught up to me because after my son, it did not want to go. <laughs> um, and it took a comment from my mom of all people. And you know what? I God bless her heart. I know she didn't mean it, but it stung. And that was the fire that lit a little fire underneath me to do something, to make a, to want to make a change. So for the next year, year and a half, I did every beach body program you can think of, not once, sometimes twice a day, just to prove her wrong. <laughs> so <laughs> lost the weight. I sure did. But then um, my husband knocked me up again. Great. <laughs> so all that hard work. <gasps> no. Dang it. <laughs> I was in denial. I was in denial. I was like, no, I don't want to do this again. Um, but lo and behold, I can't see my life without my, my baby girl. <laughs> That's Kristen. Kristen. That's Kristen. Yes, my my youngest too. Um, but six weeks. I couldn't wait for my six weeks clearance. Mm -hmm. Enough. As soon as I got that clearance, I was at it again. I more cardio on top of cardio on top of cardio on top of cardio. Notice there's no strength training going on here. So I lost the weight, then some, to the point where I didn't recognize myself. Mm -hmm. I dropped from a size six eight to a zero. Wow. For me, that is small. Mm -hmm. I know I was small to begin with, but that was really small. I was obsessed with a 25-inch waist, Y, and being 125 pounds. And it became so obsessive that I stopped eating because mm -hmm. I wanted to be small. I just wanted to be skinny to the point where I didn't even recognize myself anymore. So a friend of mine had convinced me to join the gym where I was living at the time in Pennsylvania. And I got a trainer for a year. And that's when I started doing a little bit more strength training. I started deadlifting and squatting. And granted, it, it wasn't heavy, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it was enough of a change to see some muscle definition, the tone in the lean mass. Yeah. And it just kind of, it stayed, <laughs> it stuck. And I wanted more. I wanted to see how much more I can do, how much more I can live, how much bigger can I get, <laughs> you know? And so it just became a challenge after a challenge. Like, oh, I did this now, what's next? You know, so that is kind of like my background and how I got started um, with weightlifting and then pandemic. <laughs> you gym anymore. What do you do? <laughs> Before we get to that, I just I just want to point out to anyone who's watching that Michelle didn't start strength training till after her third child. So how old were you then? 28? I'm sorry, 31? 31 when wow. I started strength training. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> You don't have to have always done it. You don't have to have started when you were five. I mean, I don't know who, how many five-year-olds are strength training, but you know what I mean? You can pick something up new and take it to these incredible places like you have. It's amazing. I love it. Anyways, back to the story. How did Tonal come into your life? I, I love this story. I love the way you tell it. <laughs> oh, oh, Tonal. <laughs> so I moved into my current home back in 2019. Um, we moved in January and I was first introduced to Tono in April. When we first bought the house, we had some work to do, you know, and naturally there were things on the list that I wanted to check off. But for the life of me, I couldn't understand why my dear husband wanted to start the basement. <laughs> You're like, no, let's like do the living room, the kitchen. There's just so many other things that need to be done. Yeah, but I understand. Get gung ho on demoing this basement and starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. So in late March, um, we ripped this entire basement down. So if you've seen my videos, you kind of get a, a of what my gym looks like. Mm -hmm. It had 
paneling, dark carpets, drop seal, you, you name it. Yeah. <laughs> so the card, and he was like, it had to be done by a certain time. And I'm like, but why? What's the rush? He's like, it's, it's just for your gym. It's your gym. Don't you want a gym? I'm like, I only have a barbell and a few kettlebells. I don't really need that much space. Thank you. I can remember as clear as day when the doorbell rang and the X, XPO sh um, installer shut up. We're here to install your tonal. And I'm like, that ain't for me. <laughs> Mind you, I don't even know what a tonal is. So like, I said, my neighbor. <laughs> Let me go get my husband. Maybe this is for him. So I get him and, you know, they go off doing whatever it is that they were doing. And they were just being all secretive and whatnot. And I should preference this by saying my birthday was like a couple of days away. <laughs> so secretly, I was hoping they were trying to throw me off because I really wanted a squat rack. <laughs> of all things, that's all I wanted. So after they finished, you know, setting up and doing whatever they were doing, they called me to come downstairs. So I take my time and I'm like giggling, like, yeah, I'm going to get a squat rack. Yeah, I'm going to get a squat rack. I come downstairs and all three of them were like, surprise and i'm like yeah. is that a tv like a weird <laughs> tv they put it in wrong <laughs> try not to show my disappointment <laughs> and i should preface this because i know there's a lot of people who are waiting and they're really excited to get their tonal installed but this is two years ago when no one really knew what tonal was right, right. he only learned about tonal because he was in california and you know, he just so happened to see it. <laughs> so this was a by chance. <laughs> wow. So that is pretty much how Tono kind of came into play for me. And I actually didn't really use it that often, believe it or not. It wasn't until January this year wow. that I really dived into using my Tono the way it was meant to, to mm -hmm. me. And so, yeah, I mean, I hope that your disappointment has gone away. Oh, no, I'm not mad at him anymore. I'm actually really glad he did disappoint me and get me something else. <laughs> he knew. Um, but no, he did good. And, you know, he knew what was better for me at the time. Yeah. So much more than a squat rack. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, how do you use tonal? What are your workouts like? What's your routine like? What don't I do on <laughs> um, So I currently work on a six day split. I work each body part twice a week and I integrate cardio in between and recoveries in between. But I'm also doing Jackson's shoulder strength program and it kind of works in line with my six day split. So whatever I do there, I just eliminate from my, <laughs> my program. <laughs> Just to clarify, you're doing an entire Jackson program and your own program. I don't know, I just, just wanted to make sure we like stopped on that for a second. Yeah, and to, to my program. I know, I know I'm crazy. <laughs> but um, I do do the six day split and I actually break my workouts throughout the day sometimes. Um, I do get up really early. I get up at 4.30 while most of the world is sleeping. Mm -hmm. But that is the time I choose to get my workout in because you know what? No one is awake. It's just me. I can focus. There's no distractions. And then I will get like an hour and a half to two hours in. And then I go wake up my kids, get them ready for school, do whatever it is necessary to get them set up. And then the minute I get them on their Zoom calls, I will come back downstairs, A, do a core or do a recovery or do Natalie's two mile challenge on the treadmill. Mm -hmm. But it's breaking up, you know, my workout throughout the day versus when I had to go to the gym. If I didn't get it done in those two hours, it was just not happening. Yeah. I'm not my friend at the gym. Yes. Well, so that is pretty much my routine. On Saturdays, it's kind of like a free for all. I get to try different things, <laughs> you know, throw some extra stuff in. Um, but Sundays, I normally would rest, but my rest days look a lot different now because of tonal mm. now, it includes yoga it includes meditation it includes recovery it includes mobility like i would just pick oh, like i already did you next i did you next <laughs> but i get to a point where i just feel 
calm and relaxed and I can just go out through the day and just, you know, be the happy mom my kids need me to be. <laughs> were, were you already incorporating those things like yoga, mobility, stretching? Nope. So how, what impact has that had on your lifting? It has dramatically impacted my lifting because now I'm able to squat deeper. I'm mm -hmm. able to press correctly, actually fully extending my arm because the mobility in my shoulder was very limited. Mm -hmm. My and my hips was very limited. I never stretched. I kid you not, my favorite, my favorite yoga is evening calm and um, calm mobility, I believe it's called, because it's those double pigeons, I tell you. <laughs> those double pigeons, but those double pigeons work. Yeah. I needed them. Um, that was the biggest thing that was missing in my routine. It was stretching. It was yoga. It was recovery. I was not giving my body that opportunity to do that. So I was always stuck. I can never just get past that. Not going. Yeah. That, right. <laughs> wow. That's incredible that it's, it hasn't just been about like adding weight, adding weight, adding weight for you. It was like adding weight. And then you flatlined until you added in that mobility, recovery, active mobility kind of stuff. So for all of you lifters out there listening, do those stretches that are in the workouts and programs, yes. out recovery workouts. <laughs> One more time for the people in the back. <laughs> it really, it really, did, it really did make a huge difference, especially in my in my shoulder, my right shoulder to be specific. Because sometimes it's not that I can't press or lift; it's just I don't have the range. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I learn the range from continuing adding weight. Right, you just end up hurting yourself. End up hurting yourself, and which I out for longer, and you won't gain strength. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Correctly tensioned muscles, not too tight, not too long, are the strongest type of muscles. So, they get gains, baby. <laughs> um, and I, I love this story you told me a while back about one of the benefits you got from having tonal at home instead of at the gym, which was you were able to like even out imbalances and also do those those like awkward isolation exercises. Talk a little bit about that. So, for instance, um, a lot of us ladies we want to work on our lower halves, but some of the moves in the gym is um, quite intimidating. <laughs> awkward. You don't want to do it because you feel as though all eyes are on you. Yeah. yeah. So now, instead of skipping those things, even though I know I should be doing them, I have no problem doing them at home because it's just me. And if I choose to record it and show it, I can, but I don't have to. <laughs> so just being comfortable in your environment, then uh, that will allow you to do things that you normally wouldn't do or things mm -hmm. you normally wouldn't try. So. I can't cardio, right? That's oh. what I do. <laughs> I tried it to say that I tried it, and then I did it again to make sure that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had the opposite experience. I tried it to be like, okay, I haven't. I'm interviewing these girls. I need to try it, and now I I really do it because I actually like it. <laughs> Even though I look so ridiculous. Sometimes it's just default back to my two step. But you know what? Movement is movement. And movement. I'm to be, you know what? I have someone to follow along. And when I get lost, it's okay. I can restart. No one's looking at me to see what mistakes I just made. <laughs> okay, back to your workouts. Um, what are some of your favorite features on Total Now? Oh, right now, SmartFlex Game Changer. But mm -hmm. aside from that, Burnout. Believe it or not, I love Burnout. So when at the gym, you typically need someone or a spotter to remove the weight for you. Here, I don't have anyone. But with burnout mode, I will max out mm -hmm. my 10, 12 or whatever rep range I set. But then I would just move the weight a little bit so that way it'll drop 5, 10 pounds. Knock out another 10 reps. Drop oh. it. Knock out another 10 reps till I get to five pounds and I cannot move anymore. So, because that's, cool, that's actually not like the, the it's for it. I know, but it, but it works for you. 
perfectly for a drop set. Yeah. I love seeing on your Instagram the the versatility that you bring to tonal. I mean, you're doing like um, you're doing like so many modifications and different attachments. And I mean, it's amazing just to watch the moves that you come up with. It's so creative. It shows the range of what you can do with this piece of equipment. And it's just really impressive. So please keep sharing those videos. You inspire all of us. I definitely I want to show people that you don't need to go to the gym to get the same benefits. Mm -hmm. You don't need to have five, 10 different machines to do one exercise. It With the snap of a button and a click of a button, you adjust your arms and now you have a chest press. Mm -hmm. Now you have a squat. Now you have a shoulder press. Now you have a reverse fly. So I'm just showing people that you don't need all these machines. You really only just need one. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I agree. Um, we had a really great, great question come from John Ian Briotti. He said, now that you've had Tonal for two years, you're, you're an OG Tonal user. How have you seen it evolve? One, I would like to name my custom moves, please. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm pushing that one for you guys. I need to go. <laughs> I mean, there is, other than, um, I can't actually really think of how much better tonal can be because honestly, it's really that versatile. You know, depending on your training type or what your goals are, I can't see why you can't achieve them with tonal. And I know, and I've heard a lot of people make a big deal about 200 pounds. Like 200 pounds is a lot of weight if you are lifting it correctly. Yeah. And then people also forget tempo. Mm -hmm. you know, what is your rep range? Are you doing too much in proper form? There's really not much you can't do, you know, without tonal. Um, benches would be great <laughs> because then that would be interesting. But other than that, the machine in itself, learning my strength, learning where my weakest points are, so that way I'm a more effective lifter, you can't ask for anything better. Love it. And what, what's your favorite non-strength training content on Tonal? Oh, that's hard. And I say that's hard is because, again, Tonal has allowed me to try things I normally wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I, on my list, when you first sign on to your Tonal and you, like, scroll through, mm -hmm. training, recovery, and then yoga. Mm -hmm. So for me non-training <laughs> is my yoga pro the yoga programs and all my recovery programs meditation is another one mm -hmm. i think meditation is actually harder than strength training to sit there and be still with your mind is hard <laughs> and just focusing on being present without having ten thousand different things going on but it has allowed me to narrow in on myself, listening to Jared, listening to Allison, focusing on my intentions, you know. For me, those are definitely my favorite non-strength, as many would call it. For me, it's mental strength for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Non-training, but still non -training, training. But still training. Training your mind to be still. Training your body to be still, to be present, and to allow yourself to feel things, you yeah. know. <laughs> Yeah. And speaking of taking time for yourself, that me time, you mentioned before that your your fitness journey has had a, an impact on your body image and it's it's played a part, um, like it's why you started and it's also evolved from throughout your journey. So can you tell us a little bit about your body image struggles and um, where you're at now and how you got to be where you're at? So my body image, I still struggle with body image, believe it or not. Uh, we live in a world of cameras and Photoshop and lighting, you know, to trick us, to make us feel as though we should look like this or we should be like this. So it took me a very long time to love the skin that I was in, but I had to be happy first. And I wasn't happy the way I was. And I had this vision in my head of what I wanted to look like. And I worked my butt off <laughs> to get there. 
you know, so going from even before kids being a size six to eight, dropping to a zero to going all the way back up because I have like the bulk in season. And, oh, my abs disappeared. Oh, what is happening? You, you have to train your mind to know it's temporary. You have to train your mind to know that we're doing this for a reason, <laughs> you know? So I had to take myself off of Instagram a couple of times mm -hmm. because it was just too overwhelming. Yeah. It was perfection, but there is no such thing. Yeah. And once you realize that and you work with what you have and you're happy with what you have, that is when things will change for you. That is when your perspective of yourself and the world changes. So um, I actually forgot what was your original question. My body, yes, yes, yes. My body image has gone from a negative two to an don't hate me. I'm going to still say like a seven because there are things that I still want to work on. Yeah. But there's no, like I said, there's no such thing as perfection is always continual progress. Mm -hmm. And like you said on Instagram and in the community, you're redefining what it means, what mom bod means and what it means to look like a woman and what it means to look like a mom. And that's really inspiring to a lot of us when we're given this cookie cutter image of, you know, this is what you should look like because Cameron Diaz looks like this or whoever, you know, a million people you could compare yourself to. But you're saying, no, this is this is what Michelle looks like. This is what Michelle wants to look like. And I'm going to work my ass off to, to get here and just and stay here. Number that, one. That's another thing, because when I first started, there wasn't a lot to mm -hmm. compare myself to. It was always comparing to the 18 year old or to the 22 year old who's never had a child inside of them or had their body stretched in all sorts of directions. So um, it's just being happy, finding your happiness, what makes you happy, you know, and then just kind of taking it from there. <laughs> and and being strong in the process. Being strong. Yeah. It's Not just physically strong, but, you know, mentally strong too, because really in actuality, your mind controls your body. Your body is not going to do anything unless your mind tells it to do it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I've developed muscles, but that's because I had to literally talk myself into, you can do one more rep. You can do two more rep. You can add five more pounds. You can do this. So strength in itself is both physical and mental. <laughs> Absolutely. And speaking of that mental strength that you've built, um, you have three kids. You are a loving wife. You have your own graphic design business. You are now homeschooling all three of your kids. And last I checked on the leaderboard, you worked out 75 and a half hours in the last 30 days. So that's about two, two and a half hours a day. By God, how do you do it all, woman? I mean, really, like, can you give us uh, some tips or some inspiration of how to fit it all in? What, what's your secret? Sometimes I don't know. <laughs> But I'm a firm believer of if it's important enough to you, you will find a way. Mm -hmm. And for me, my fitness is very high on my priority. Like not much gets done until my workout is done. My mm -hmm. kids are trained to know nothing gets done until mommy does her workout. My <laughs> husband knows you're not getting fed until my, home, my, my workout is done. So once you train your family to understand what your priority <laughs> It makes it a little bit easier. To you're, you're a coach for you know women who want to build muscle, but you should also be like a family coach, like coach your kids, coach your husband. Coach yeah. your husband. <laughs> Tip for that, I love that. I do I do get up, like I said, I do get up early. I get up at four thirty, and I do my main heavy strength training where there are no distractions. And that way I don't feel guilty if I miss not doing a recovery or miss doing an ab workout. But my main workout was done for yeah. that. And with my kids, again, it's priorities and creating a schedule. I work very much on the schedule. If it's not there, don't talk to me about it. This is what we need to do today. I don't want to be any more overwhelmed than I already am. <laughs> So organization, planning ahead, and making that commitment to yourself. And making that commitment to myself. And that's where I lost myself in the beginning. I just forgo myself. Every, everyone and everything else was more important than me. 
And one day it just clicked. I'm like, no, if I don't make time for myself, then I will never be happy, which in turn is my real life miserable. Yeah. So <laughs> just finding that <laughs> find it if it's important enough to you, because you're going to figure it out. It's just a matter of what are you willing to give up? Mm -hmm. We always have enough time. It's just right. making that priority. Making that priority. Mm -hmm. Would you say that you were always a morning person, or have you kind of tried to ha had to train yourself to be a morning person? And if so, please uh -huh. tell us how. <laughs> I've actually always been a morning person. <laughs> so I'm productive in the morning, but when I say I was a morning person, I'm still talking about like nine o'clock. Okay. I train myself <laughs> to be productive at 4 30 in the morning i had to kind of set the standard where like okay look this is not going down until unless you get up if you don't you can't be mad that you didn't get such and such accomplished because this was on you this was your choice <laughs> you know so it makes it easy for me to wake up that early and now i get to the point where i get up before my alarm which is really weird <laughs> because it's really dark <laughs> But it becomes a routine. Yep. You know? so. Steve Henderson just said, for what you want to do, you'll find a way. For what you don't, you'll find an excuse. That's, That's so right. true. It's very true. <laughs> I butt out of bed so early tomorrow. Morgan, watch out. <laughs> Um, okay, I want to help the community get to know you a little bit better. So we're going to play a really quick game of this or that. So I'm going to rapid fire, say some things to you, and you choose um, which one is more for you. Okay, ready? And you can play along in the comments if you'd like. Squats or deadlifts? Deadlifts. Deadlifts. All right. Eccentric or chains? Mm, eccentric. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, but smart flex over both of those? A smart flex over both, yes. <laughs> um, barbell or handles? Barbell. Mm -hmm, me too. Theragun or foam roller? It depends on what day it is. <laughs> okay, tell, us, tell us about that. Which one do you use when? For back day, any, any upper body, I like to foam roll. But for mm -hmm. leg day, I need that Theragun. I need to release all that built up back to gas because I trust me, I built up a lot. And I need oh, to I've, seen you. I've seen you front squatting. It's insane. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Go big or go home or raising the barbell? Go big or go home. That's more my stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh, yoga or mobility? They go hand in hand for me. I can't do it. Okay, fine. <laughs> mobility. Okay. Um, pre workout or protein shake? Protein shake. Barefoot or shoes? Working out. Barefoot. Have barefoot you always. Barefoot club. That's <laughs> always. I love how like every couple of months someone brings up that debate in the community and there's like a 70 page thread, 70 comment thread about shoes, no shoes. I love it. Every, every couple of months. Why you're at home? <laughs> it's like clothes or no clothes. Eh, can go either way with <laughs> Um, Morning workout or evening workout? Morning. Morning. But you're both too. Yes, but the bulk of it is done in the morning. Morning, yeah. Dance cardio or kickboxing? Kickboxing. I, I, I know I know what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, I haven't actually tried a kickboxing class. I really need to. It's pretty fun. I can follow Gabby pretty easily, so I would take that over at dance cardio. <laughs> <laughs> kickboxing will be my next endeavor. Maybe I'll film it for you guys because it will be equally as entertaining as dance cardio. Trust me, I'm not very coordinated at kickboxing. <laughs> um, so also, I posed a question to the community earlier today. You are number one on the leaderboard, and you are the number one most volume lifted by a female on the funnel. So just a round of applause to you for that. I mean, that is truly really incredible. But what I found very, very impressive was how much ahead you are in that number one spot. Um, and so I wanted to see if you had a guess. Um, how many pounds do you think you are ahead in that number one spot in volume from the number two woman who's also incredibly strong i have no idea <laughs> no doubt. we had guesses today in the community um ranging from 1 million to 5 million so just just throw out something i'm gonna stick with the 1 million 
Okay, you are you are in that number one spot by one million nine hundred twenty-seven thousand one hundred forty-four pounds. One point nine million pounds above the rest of us. Wow! <laughs> Incredible <Another> squats. <laughs> Incredible. I, I was trying to dig into like what other records you hold. Um, probably a lot of them. Um, and I wanted to give a shout out to Joanna Lau, who is very active in the community. She's actually our number third, number third um, for high volume. Very impressive. I was rooting you on. <laughs> you guys are strong ladies who inspire us all. So thank you. Number two is uh, Janie. She's in here too, but not all the time. She's probably not watching right now, but I'll message her later and let her know. Um, so thank you for setting an example for us and giving us something to look up to. <laughs> and your your most recent volume, I mean, it's probably changed from when I looked at it this afternoon to like right now, you probably just did like 10 front squats before this interview. Um, is Read it to us. It's 5,621,705. Amazing. Come January. What'd you say? By January, second week of January, I should hit that 6 million mark. Mm -hmm. I got uh, to start doing my front squats more. <laughs> incredible, incredible, incredible. Okay. Um, what are your top tips for someone who might be just starting out on their tonal journey or their strength training journey? Um, and they're watching you like, wow, how did she get here? How do I be like that? What, what's your like top one or two tips for someone? A, don't quit. Mm. B, it takes time. Mm. C, Follow your program thoroughly. Mm. That is the only way you're going to know what works and what doesn't. If you quit too early, you'll never know what could have been. Um, listen to your body. Most importantly, don't try to overwork it because you're trying to get there faster. Once you realize that your fitness journey is a lifestyle, then it will become so much more enjoyable. Mm. Um, let's see diet okay what, what works for you and by diet i don't mean eating salads and you know i mean being careful of what you're eating watching what your intake is and being mindful of what you're actually training for sometimes you're actually under eating sometimes right. you need to eat a little less sometimes you need to eat a little bit more it just really depends on your goal so and so those things your training will become so much easier so having being clear about your goal, choosing a program for your goal, and then being really intentional with that program and with your, your dietary intake. Exactly. <laughs> you can expect to change physically if you are not watching what you're eating. You can't, it's not gonna work. This I've tried it, trust me, it's not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> your body is not, you're not gonna see the results you're really searching for unless you follow through with your nutrition. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And then just showing up, just showing up for yourself every single day and doing something. Even when you don't feel like it, that is when it actually matters the most. That is when you'll actually see the most benefit. It's those days you're like, ah, oh, I don't really want to do it, but you do it anyway. And then you feel so damn proud of yourself that tomorrow you come back with a vengeance like, yeah, I'm going to show you. <laughs> you have a go-to workout for those days where you're just not feeling it? Like, what's your go-to? Yeah. It's Jared's um, metab Metabolic Madness. I do both of them just because I'm crazy like that. Like, I just get a good burn, a good yeah. sweat, and I just feel good. It's all those endorphins just being with I just feel really good after that. And then I go do something crazy and go lift. <laughs> I know I shouldn't. But that was what I would need. That's what I needed. So. Yeah get out my funk to get out of whatever feeling I was in to get motivated to do, you know, the real work. <laughs> Is that his coaches from home one? Um, yes. It yeah. Okay. That's, that's that. his go to as well. She does yeah. that all the time. Whenever uh -huh. she's feeling like anything, she puts that on. I so, love <laughs> everyone. It's a really good one. Um, so funny. Okay, um, one more question for you. And then we have some questions from the community that I wanted to ask you. And while Michelle's ask, is answering this next question, please feel free to write any comments for Michelle in the comments and I will uh, sort through them and ask her those questions. So Michelle, final question, what does it mean for you to be your strongest? 
Let's see. So to be your strongest, for me at least, is to consciously make a daily choice to do the things you know you need to do, even when you don't feel like it. So we all know that strength can be both physical and it can be mental. But it's those daily choices that we make that will help us get over our fears to tackle on those adversities in order to be a better version of ourselves, so to speak. And I really believe that we all have that fire inside of us. For some of us, it might be a little spark. For others, it might be guns blazing. But we all have it. Mm -hmm. And your strongest is to have that desire to want to change, to want to do better, to want to evolve to be a better version of yourself. I love that. That's beautiful. I love that. Um, yeah, everyone does have something inside them, whether they know it or not, whether they recognize it or not, whether they feel it or not. And sometimes you just need that ignition. And maybe for some people watching tonight, like this interview will be that little spark for them to get going on their. Maybe they've held it on the wall for three months like you did and haven't used it yet. And this will be what they need to, to hit that start button. What about all it moves? <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, okay, first question. This is from Alvin Rivera. Hi, um, Alvin. <laughs> he said, when can we do a group workout of one of your custom workouts? Oh, you should be careful what you ask for, Alvin. <laughs> you might not like me afterwards. <laughs> that would be really fun. So everyone that's doing, um, it's that, what is it, pep in your step? Mm -hmm. And do a lot of presses. Well, you don't want to see my, my, my chest roots. <laughs> yeah, I'm scared. Alvin, take that. <laughs> John Ian Briotti says, how does it feel to be number one on the leaderboard on both days and hours? Honestly, it's, it feels like a regular day to me because whether or not there was a leaderboard, I was still going to work out. <laughs> um, I don't track it to see if I'm on top. I it's there. I just track to see how much did I actually really lift today? Like, wow. And I love to wait at the end of my system. Like, did I hit a volume? Did I hit a PR? No. Darn it. Okay. Next time I'm going to try a little bit harder. Like I'm always trying to push myself and the leaderboard is not what's pushing me. It's me pushing myself to see how much stronger I can get, how much bigger I can get, how much rounder I can get. So I love it. Um, uh, Harry Prashar asked, I'm sorry if I said that wrong, Harry. Um, so now that you're here, you're at that number one spot, you've got this physique, um, what motivates you to stay here? What motivates you to keep going? I like to eat. <laughs> um, and not like the healthiest of things. <laughs> so that is a really good motivator. So if I want to eat a cheeseburger or if I want to eat a slice of pizza, or if I want to eat a half of an apple pie for Thanksgiving and not be about it because I know the very next day I'm going to go work out anyway. No, she said not a half a piece. Half a pie. <laughs> half a pie. <laughs> yes, half a pie. That's, that's what I did to myself, I know. But, you know um, and it's, it's a habit now, you know, mm -hmm. I did it to prove my mom wrong. Then I did it to prove to myself that I can lift this amount of weight. I can bench this amount of weight. Now it's just like, it's become my routine and I am really grouchy and angry and just unsettled when I don't work out. So mm -hmm. it's just become a part of me. <laughs> So it's easy to stay motivated when it's something you just, you, you always do. It's almost like effortless at this point. Like it's not that the work that you're doing isn't involved. No. In a lot of effort. <laughs> but the, the, the will to do it is, it just, it's natural to you. It's now. natural at this point. It only it's never always that way, as you mentioned. It's you weren't working out. Eight years yeah. to get to this yeah. point. You know, where like, okay, who in their right mind wants to wake up at the crack of dawn to work out, <laughs> you know? Cool. Morgan asked, uh, what's been your favorite tonal program so far? My favorite, okay, so I'm gonna have a little confession. I've okay. started three programs and I haven't completed any. Wow. Um, this, I have exactly, this is shoulder strength and I have four workouts left. 
And this will be my first program I'm actually going to complete the first. I don't remember the first two, but when I looked back, I think I did only one. And that was back when I first got tonal. I had no idea what I was doing. So I probably hit the button by accident. For all. <laughs> <laughs> and the second one, I went halfway through and I just never completed. So one of my goals is to actually finish a program. <laughs> right. um, what are your other um, fitness goals that you're working towards right now? Um, to be more mobile. I want more mobility in my shoulder. Um, again, sleep more so I can recover faster. I can grow more. Because <laughs> believe it or not, you actually grow when you're sleeping. You have to rest. Like That's right. I'm on a move, move, move. I have to learn to take it down a notch. Mm -hmm. um, Jess, you know, I'm kind of really... It's fun for me. So it's not necessarily a goal. It's just what else can I do? You know? Um, and that's the beauty of it. It's like, oh, okay. I see this person doing this. I wonder if I can do it. So it's just, it's me challenging myself. It's me via my own motivation and my own inspiration, so to speak. I love it. Um, Deborah Kerner Allison said, would love to know your strength score, Michelle. I think we all do. Um, the new update messed with my strength score, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is 1160 right now. 1160. Dang, girl. Dang, I got to catch up. I love it. Okay, let me find some. We have a lot of questions coming in for you. Um, one second. I'm finding them. I'm finding them. Okay. Um, here we go. Do, okay, uh, Brian Disturb, um, apologies if I said that wrong. Um, did you work out just as much time-wise before Tomal as you do now? Actually, I think I work out more now. Because mm. it's in your house. It's in my house, I have no excuse. Um, sometimes I'm bored and I have nothing else to do, so I go do a recovery or I do a yoga. Um, a, I couldn't work out as much before, because again, it was that, time factor uh classes a were offered at times i simply couldn't go i had to take my kids i had to pick up my kids i just couldn't do it but now it's here literally at any hour of the day i can come downstairs and just you know throw a workout in so i actually do more <laughs> now but a lot of it is really recovery which is what my body really needed mm -hmm. Oops, I love that. Um, and Deborah Kerner Allison also said, have you ever been injured in strength training? And I'll add on to that. How have you worked through injuries? I've hurt my back the first year of strength training. Um, I was deadlifted and I just incorrect form. And for the next year, I didn't deadlift for a whole year. I didn't deadlift. Um, I've hurt my right shoulder, which is why I've been working on my mobility. I've hurt my elbow again. Mm -hmm incorrect form trying to go too heavy you know the big old go um but i have to recognize that this is the long haul and not short term and even myself you know try to get ahead <laughs> and then it takes me two steps backwards and now that i'm building back that stream like nope 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 i know i can do it but i'm not going to i'm going to take my time i want to make sure that my form is right Hi. <laughs> Do we have some visitors? Yes. It's your, your name twin. <laughs> Hi, Caitlin. Come on in. She's hiding now. She's being oh, Everyone wants to say hi. She's being shy. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> but yes, I've been injured, and which is why I know from experience to take my time build that mind muscle connection you know make sure i have that correct form and not let my ego come into play right ego right and your recovery <laughs> not my recovery it's it's been a real game changer for me doing the mobilities i've done every last mobility here so keep it up Adam. there's more coming i promise thank you francis <laughs> you want to throw a shoulder okay <laughs> Flowing, that would be great. A quick, I will send it back to the gods. Yes, a quick upper body release would be 
amazing. <laughs> I love how this interview is like somehow morphed into Michelle's feedback, personal feedback Friday. <laughs> I mean, you have to use your phone when it's available. <laughs> So good. Um, well, Frank Lang says, I started working out early in the morning because of you, Michelle. Thank you. Don't worry, Frank. On the weekends, it's all you. It's That's all cool. you. I sleep in a little later. That's so cool. You're a little bit out of focus if you want to come forward. It's just a little bit. <laughs> okay. um, but we are out of time, actually. Um, this was incredible. So many great questions. Um, so many great insights. So inspirational. No, I'm going to go do a workout now because I'm feeling really motivated and like I can't just not after listening to all of that. So if you're watching, you haven't done your tonal workout today, just go up to your trainer, hit something, maybe metabolic moves, maybe yoga, maybe like just a six minute ab workout. Just go get it in. Um, Michelle, so much for inspiring us. I don't, you don't even know how much you inspire us. Just your presence on that leaderboard, just watching your Instagrams. Um, I know from personal experience that I've gotten off the butt and gone and done something because of you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, it really means a lot to me. <laughs> You're incredible. Um, and I'm, I'm so excited for you to get your certification and um, let me know when you wanna be a tonal coach. Well, I'm, I'm ex I'll push it. <laughs> Let you know. <laughs> I want to see everyone's feedback Friday this week be like a Coach Michelle program. <laughs> um, I will catch up with you later and I'll see you on the leaderboard. And thank you again. Thank you again, Kate. You have a wonderful evening. <laughs> oh, my name, Quinn. Good night. My daughter. She's saying, Oh, there she is. Come on, get up in here. <laughs> Good night, Michelle. Good night. Bye. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, come back next week. We have Coach Lissa from Therabody is going to be on teaching us how to optimize our tonal training workouts and our recoveries with Theragun. So that's going to be a good one. And then, like I said, we have so many events in December. We've got tonal treats this week. We've got Ask Coach Liz tomorrow. We've got Pablo's Reverse Training Workout Tuesday. So many opportunities to get involved with the tonal community. So I will see you there. Thank you everyone. And go do your workout. I'm going to go do mine. <laughs>